Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. In this episode, we welcome Coach Fofo to Momentum Africa. Coach Fofo is a former professional soccer player from Togo who have been playing soccer professionally for almost 20 years, splitting his time between teams in Europe and Togo. In 2010, Coach Fofo established a non-profit soccer organization titled Elite Soccer Youth Development Academy. So welcome Coach Fofo to Momentum Africa. Thank you and I thank you for having me in your uh, podcast show. Would you mind telling us and the viewers uh, who is Coach Fofo? Uh, thank you to ask me that question. Uh, Coach Fofo uh, was named, uh, was born uh, 20 May 20, 1967 in Togo. And in my early age, uh, like uh, every African, uh, we don't have energy to play. You know, uh, we had to be outside and vent our own playtime. And uh, I'm coming from a large family, family of uh, uh, 10 kids. And then uh, grew up in my neighborhood. I cannot tell say we, 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 we don't have anything, but we're also happy. We are very happy because, you know, our parents make uh, a way for us to be happy because we we do things we want to do. And then we we have the whole neighborhood, the whole village was uh, watching us. So we don't have a, a right to do any mistake. So growing up, I was a very a good a, a good a good boy. And then, and to, you know, I start uh, doing what I love to do. Of course, I go to school. And then soccer, it was my early age, you know, things uh, God has blessed me to do. And then I do it to, today. Uh, so soccer is what you grew up playing. And um, I, I, I was playing soccer too. So I love soccer. So since you uh, started uh, playing soccer at that early age, so what uh, inspired you to become a coach I know you have a, a nonprofit by the name CEDA, uh Elite Soccer uh, Youth Academy here in the greater Washington, D.C. area. So can you tell our listeners uh, a little bit about what you do, how you came to pursue what you're pursuing for the community? Uh, first of all, I would like to go to the beginning of your question. Uh, like who inspired me to be a coach? I was having lucky among uh, more than 200 kids uh, first to be picked up after playing in my neighborhood and then playing uh, you know, on, on uh, my college, my high school team, uh, at first uh, elementary in the middle school and then play on my high school team. And then I was pick up uh, with uh, a team who's my neighborhood uh, in my city who my brother also play for. So I was lucky to pick up one day we we been around playing and then they need somebody to join to the team to play. And they call me and I come over there and I play. So that day, they never let me go. They just give me the license. And I become officially joining the first division club who I started with the U15 all the way to uh, senior. So quickly, I jumped to the national team for the U.S. you know, U16 team who 1980, who I'll be able to select and play in my first <clears throat> international game in Nigeria in a Sulurele Stadium. And that day, uh, we lose the game and Nigeria was qualified to go to the China, the, the World Cup under 16 in the China. So I never, lose, I never lose hope and I will continue working hard. And then the following year, I was again selected to national team under 20, and who I work hard and then we went to, uh, we won our all game and then we, 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 we went to uh, the World Cup 1987 in Chile of Santiago. And come back after the World Cup, I had to travel, have a chance to be known by any team, another team in France, Europe, who called me. So I joined that team. And from then, my La Carrière soccer life beginning. So I play uh, to age 19 all the way to 35 before uh, I give up, I retire. But, and then uh, the way I love like soccer, I say, there's no way I can, I can get away from the soccer. So I had to become a coach. And I also be inspired by my coach 
who whose name is Antonio Oscar, who took me uh, since I was a younger guy, uh, believed in me, training me very hard, uh, you know. So, and I, I learned from that coach. I learned the way he coached, the way he inspired me, the way he inspired other uh, friends around me. Uh, he's the one who gave me hope to become a coach. And when I become a coach and I, I was a very good because I love my job. I love be coaching. I love to help in the kid. I love to uh, be around uh, kids to support them and mentor and father, friends, and to build something. And after I finished my career uh, in Europe, and I had to travel to yeah, USA, and then uh, my new journey become you know beginning. So I start first uh, teaching course uh, soccer in the neighborhood and then trying to show myself to people by what I know to do. And it gradually, it started to get bigger until we had to go and create uh, uh, the ESIDA, who was the elite youth soccer uh, you know, uh, academy, uh, who had been non-profit. Uh, that non-profit uh, we call ESIDA, is the Elite Soccer Youth Development Academy. So from 1999, 20 to present, uh, that is something you know, we've been doing, I've been doing. Uh, and then we grow, uh, we grow very well. And then we have about 300 kids in our program uh, and they start growing up. And then right now we just start a couple of weeks ago, our spring season. And then we're gonna be working through the summer and make sure uh, all the kids coming out so to get training and then we can have a phone and make sure uh, kids kid are happy. That's my goal. I wanna make sure the kids are happy playing soccer, socializing, make a friend and then we give them a hope. So you, you seems like you have a long journey before you uh, came here and uh, both playing soccer internationally and for Togo. So yeah. um, definitely uh, that's, it's your, your passion shows through that you really love this sport. And I've seen you on the field training those uh, children. It's just very admirable and very inspiring to, uh, so the community here is lucky to have you for uh, you know all the talent that you gained playing soccer uh, internationally and for your country Togo of course Togo is uh, uh, a country in in West Africa so would you like to tell our viewers a little bit about uh, your country Togo just in case people might not know where Togo is yeah Togo Togo is a small a small country in West Africa between the Benin and the Ghana uh, we are about, about 56 kilometer. Uh, from the south to the north. And uh, we, at uh, those days today, we might be have like a set seven or eight million uh, people in population. And uh, Togo is very diverse. Uh, we speak, uh, uh, our parents were speaking beginning on the, the Germany. Then after the Germany lost the world, uh, you know, the world war, uh, the French and the British uh, came back to and take it over uh, Togo. And uh, Togo will become colonized by French people. And we begin speaking French. Uh, Togo is very uh, uh, a country who people are very lovely, lovely people. They are welcome people. We 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 give a choice to people in Togo. Um, uh, we have a language as a Mina, uh, Ewe, uh, Kabye, Kotokoli, uh, so many dialects. But the most of speaking in a, in, a, in a city in the south is the Ewe and the Mina, and a, of course French. Uh, but Believe me, Togo people know how to welcome people. And then when you go to Togo, when you visit Togo, you're not gonna go, you're not, not gonna like to go to, to live because you know you feel like you're home. It's the only problem we have since uh, about 15, 52 years now uh, is the political side. Togo is a very dictatorial country who uh, the power was transferred to the, to the, from the father to the son. And then the freedom is not respect, there's no job. Uh, it's, everything is shared among people who own the power. If you are not among people who own the power, your life is miserable. The, it's the only thing we have, we have now concrete and we wish those things could be changed. So the freedom and then uh, uh, whatever Togo have as a resource to be shared among the Togolese people. Uh, so we can improve uh, education. We can improve, uh, uh, you know, technology. We can bring uh, the young guy, the young kids to be know about the technology explore a lot of stuff, uh, you know, improve on education, uh, build up a new facility, school, especially on the healthcare. 
believe me, and on those days, if you, you seek in Togo, your parents or your family member don't have the money, you will die because the hospital is not good. There's no any infra infrastructure on the health side. So we have a long way to go. Uh, so, but uh, besides, Togo is a, is a good country. People who are Togolese, who live in Togo, know how to welcome people. I can, I can give my life for that. So we will have to visit Togo and uh, uh, taste that experience. I definitely have a couple of friends, uh, Plapa from uh, Togo and a couple of others. And um, I think it, it's uh, so great that uh, Togo has all this to give the world and uh, Africans, uh, of course. And thank you for bringing those number of languages spoken in Togo. But yeah. French is the main language um, from Sudan. As you know, Africa is full of, uh, uh, you know, it's just very diverse communities and different language, and that's what makes us strong. So thank you for bringing that. Uh, for ACIDA, going back to ACIDA, uh, since you've started ACIDA, how has the community here received you and whether there have been any challenges uh, for this uh, amazing nonprofit uh, doing this incredible community work to nurture our children? I know you, you not only doing soccer, but you also have uh, an academy that you nurture people. Uh, I mean, these children uh, from this age uh, five to age 19, with uh, you provide them resources education-wise and otherwise so that they can also nurture beside their uh, soccer uh, skills on the, uh, on the field. So can you explain a little if there's yeah, been uh, any challenges and how the community have received you? Yeah, the community, received me i can say the beginning was not easy like for everything in the life uh people had to trust you people had to know you and then from them but i'll begin i'll be lying i'm not lying to you it was so many criticizing stuff for people who come to me been seeing me like oh i'm a lazy guy i don't want to do anything oh i'll call myself coach i want i'm always going to be around the kids and then then gradually people start seeing something a change on the the kid life on the family life and then uh, uh a, 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 you know, God's hand was on this program and everything, everything just changed. Uh, we begin this program with uh, maybe 20 kids uh, to 300 plus kids today, but it was also the hard work I put on it. Uh, I believe I don't have any life. And I also lucky to have a, a woman who, uh, you know, who support me, my family who support me, uh, you know, being going up and come down, up and down give everything I have, sacrifice all my life to be established in this organization. Uh, so I thank God for, for that. But today, the CIDA have a different view in the community because uh, kids today can work proudly. Kids can work now, heads up, uh, and being called a good citizen. Uh, we have an CIDA uh, combined education and sport, but 95% honorable student in our program. And it's, and it's keeping increasing because, you know, uh, we just using the soccer as a bridge to elevate our kids to the education. Uh, besides soccer, it's either providing a high quality education at the term of civic engagement, SAT prep, math class, uh, entrepreneurial, uh, coding class, uh, uh, resume building, uh, business creation, uh, we give, we distribute food. Uh, we been uh, assistance uh, for uh, rental assistance, uh, 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 census provider. We do so many things in our community to connect our parents to the society and all through to the, the, the community, God, the government to know, uh, so our parents can know exactly what's going on on the, on the, on the community. So ESIDA is the more than just soccer. We're not just a soccer academy, but we beyond doing more multiple tasks in the community to make sure the next generation it was more powerful know exactly what they want uh we are sure our parents we want their kids when they graduate from college high school they should not go to small college but they should go to the big four-year furnished college so they can become a, a good a citizen so you see that is there we're working hard we're not perfect but we are working hard to be, be perfect and make sure our kids in the community is happy, parents are happy. And then uh, we have so many other programs, like a parent and a staff, you know, parent, kids, staff day, who we, we come, 
uh, and then we drop everything. The parent will come and the kid will come. We play together, have a cookout. Uh, we have a back to school event who we do the pulling. The kid gonna be on the water and we supply backpacks for our kid to go to school. Uh, we have a health fair event. We provide you know health screening to the whole community. Uh, we we have so many program in our hand and you know to make sure uh, the parent, the kid who live our community to well informed by what the government are providing, what the government has given, and also what the academy is make sure everybody at the same page. So uh, the happiness, uh, because I know in my uh, in Togo, uh, a proverb say it take a whole village to raise a child. So uh, it take the whole community come together, agree in one only purpose to behind the kid to raise them so they can achieve what we want them to achieve. So those kind of old uh, proverb and old mentality we bring from Africa to edu continue to educate our kids here in the community. And then to finish, the SIDA is very diverse. We have a white, we have a black, we have a brown, we have a Chinese, name it, Jewish people. We have all, everybody very centralized in the SIDA because soccer also is a world sport who don't have a, uh, a barrier for language only have one word of communication, the ball. The soccer ball can make people who even don't come from this, the same house can speak and be agreed on want a joy, happiness, and explore. Uh, indeed, soccer is the international uh, sport. And I like the way you put it, that it's the one language which is the... Uh, the ball that unite everyone. Uh, I've always wondered how, you know, people from all walks of life, especially playing in Europe, speaking different languages play together. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I'm very much, uh, you know, impressed about the work you do, how inclusive the community you serve, but also how you connect, you are connecting it back to the, your home of origin in Africa. And I very much like the proverb that you brought that you know, it takes a village, which is a, a classic African, uh, you know, Probably. saying that yeah. you cannot do it by yourself. No, so, no, no. Yes, yes. So yeah. that my, being- my, my name is just Coach Fofo, yeah. but I have so many people who work with behind me, behind the scene. I have a, uh, eight people on them on my operation team and a 15 coaches is on the field and a board of a trustee working together. So we make sure we are on the same page, we communicate, we agree, and before we pull it out. So it take a whole village, the whole village, but also is a part of that village. The community also is a part of that village. And then the government is also a part of the village. And then we come together to make sure the future should be bright for our kids. So a bright future, it will be uh, under your leadership. And uh, so that being said, uh, you mentioned Togo. So. Are you able to uh, give back to the community in Togo? Are you be able to work to inspire and empower other uh, youth in West Africa and particularly in Togo, given this uh, success that you've had here with inspiring uh, youth uh, through uh, ASIDA? Yes, of course, uh, since 2019, uh, we'll be trying to uh, translate in to change ASIDA to become international. Uh, we started to furnish a uh, different uh, organization in Togo by sending the shoes, old soccer, jersey, old soccer ball to different community to empower them. And then we uh, start organizing the tournament for different, uh, you know, uh, category of uh, player over there. And then in 2020, uh, who was a year of death, who was a year of COVID installation, but uh, we also continue working. So our first uh, soccer academy in, it was have a, a way to open the door in the Benin, in the local in the, in the community of local who we, we have a SIDA uh, Benin over there working very hard. We have over 20, 20, 20 22 uh, player in the dorm, uh, you know, living over there, go to school and uh, practicing. Uh, in Togo, we have a project now we are going, it's only like I told you, the government just blocked us to not give us our license since uh, almost a year, we applied to have a license so we can work. And we don't have a license, but uh, we have a ton of material we send to Africa so we can empower African kids because believe me, uh, African kids don't need a whole lot to be give you whatever you ask them to give you. So uh, we'll be very supportive uh, to the African, you know, in Africa 
where our presence is there now. We are going to Uganda. We're going to be going to Uganda. Even if you, you go to Tanzania or wherever you're going to go, uh, we're going to work in with you. We are re receiving so many demands in the African continental uh, because today we have a locking uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a website. Make sure we are very visible in the continental to Africa. So people are calling us to come and partnership with them and work together. Even in Europe, France, we are working genetically with a, a club, the first division club in France called the FC Nantes, who we align ourselves uh, a couple months coming now. We're going to be sitting down and sign with the, the, the first division uh, Premier League club so we can we can continue to do things to empower here in America and also in Africa, in, in Europe. So see that have a good mindset uh, to give a hope to Africa kids. So uh, if you go to our Facebook page, you will see all those pictures. We are doing a great, a great stuff in Africa, uh, who we also now, uh, any, anybody who's ready to work on any, any country in Africa, we are ready to put a CEDA over there and we work connected with those people and make sure uh, the African kids also have a share of uh, what we are getting here in the United States of America and the rest of the world. So you're going international and expanding. That's uh, uh, covering this er all these areas that you mentioned, which is, so that being said, uh, what what is the take? What would you like uh, at the end of the day when ACEDA has uh, succeeded uh, beyond your imagination, what would you like ACEDA to be? Uh, like I told you, uh, we continue growing up. We now uh, attend our limit now. SCA don't have a limit. First of all, SCA don't have a limit. Uh, we're not done yet. We continue to improve ourselves, continue to improve our, our relationship, build up a new um, you know, power, uh, you know, uh, uh, a money power, because at uh, the end of the day, whatever we're trying to do, if we don't have any solid network who can generate a lot of money to pay for all those programs, to pay for all those services, we can go far away. So we're going to be grateful to thank uh, the country of Montgomery County who will be supported for ACIDA over six, seven years, uh, be giving us a, a, you know, subvention, a, you know, a, a grants every year and the other uh, organization who are giving some money to provide different education. Uh, we also looking to go to the World Bank and uh, uh, contact some other corporation to give us a chance to continue and leverage the work in Africa because Africa is going to be the future. So uh, we want to succeed on those lines. But I'll finish succeeding. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to be happy. I will say what God give, God give, give to me, to me, to, to do for him. And I will say, okay, I, I accomplish that. And then also I make sure uh, we do everything genetically. We do with the respect. We do with uh, uh, you know our heart and our soul. Make sure we don't make any mistake. Mistake is a part of the life, but we want to do the right thing and make sure we continue to do the right thing. So tomorrow it should be the bright future for ESIDA organization and the rest of our people who are going to be among ESIDA. So you also uh, do uh, some other uh, social work here beside uh, soccer and uh, the, ac the academic uh, activities that you do, one of which I came across an article that talks about your uh, involvement with immigration and uh, the support of the community during those uh, hard times. So can you speak a little about your role in uh, defending um, those who are in need of your services uh, immigration-wise and what if, if you can uh, if you can elaborate more on that. Yes, uh, as a, a, every community, you all know uh, uh, people will have an immigration issue. Uh, so it come to me being also immigrant, you live in the community, we would know people also have those kind of problem. And sometimes people don't want to talk about it. But I have a chance to be working with uh, CASA. Uh, CASA is an organization who fight for all the immigrant in here in the Montgomery County and across uh, all the nation. Uh, I've been working and I'm a part of the board of uh, uh, director of uh, CASA, uh, CASA. And then what we do, we also support our immigrant community, make sure what people have a problem, we're going to be there for them. We make sure uh, people also have the freedom. And so it's a lot of work. Uh, and then we hope uh, President Biden now is working to bring a change up for the immigration policy. Uh, so that one will be make sure the 11 million, including myself, living in this uh, country in the shadow, 
to be have a bright future, to be ha have a bright day, so people can be free and do whatever they're gonna do and be part of this country totality. So uh, be involved in the community through immigration or is is a way or to totally to support my community because we want everybody to be equal. You don't see somebody crying and then you you happy, and then you think so you you are doing better. No, it's not a God love. God give us love. So can love your neighbor as the way you love yourself. Some people today in, in our community cannot even have a two or three meals a day. The kids also. So we have to make sure we stretch our hand to each other. We support each other on those hard times. So our community to be strong. And then see the smile and everybody faces in the community. That's what is driving me every day when I wake up. I say, thank God to wake me up today. Let me change somebody's life. Let me empower somebody's life. And then you, I can't refuse, I can't reject my call. That's my call I had to fulfill with the God help. So I, want to, I just want to see my community to be a place everybody can be free and smile and, and get close to each other and make sure those kind of connections reflect on our kids' life, period. So you're calling to educate the community and defend uh, their them uh, so that we can all share the equal rights that every human being uh, cherished. So that's very honorable of you uh, to do. And uh, I believe the community is very grateful to have this kind of uh, leader who is inspiring and empowering and uh, a defender for this uh, human rights. That being said, uh, what uh, what other, uh, uh, as we talk about all this, uh, obviously you've gone through some challenges to be here. Uh, I'll bring this in hope that uh, sometimes we could learn from any set, uh, you know, setbacks or challenges that will overcome to be uh, successful people. So if you can mention uh, if you have any other uh, challenges or things that you've worked through that you have uh, learned from them so that our young uh, community members that we uh, coach and you coach uh, and the one that we seek to empower could learn from your example, okay, this is how you overcome, maybe uh, they can learn from it too. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you life is not, is not easy life, but we always fall down and then we get up every day. Even if you see in this life, people who have the money and their kids also spoiling, those kids they don't they don't they don't succeed in their life because it will come a change, it will come a time in a time of their life. Maybe their parents will die, all the rich, the all the, the goods they have might be disappear. What they learn when they are young, because growing up they have everything easy. So I believe come to this country who I love, I love USA, I love the United States of America because you know, you cannot be a lazy man and come to this country. This country teach you how to put hard work. It sometimes is not easy. Believe me, I, my journey started sometime like at 3 a.m. or sometime I can sleep and I wake up at 3 a.m. and never get back to sleep. And that time I start working. That time I start putting projects on the black and the white. So I, my, my, uh, suggestion or advice to the younger guys coming is to put the hard work because when you work hard, you always succeeding. Hard work will always pay. So, and then sometimes it not might be happen or might be go through that way the way you want it, but continue put the effort, continue working hard, and you will see one day people will appreciate whatever you work for, and that's what we are today. Uh, nobody's, no one is perfect. But we always work every day to try to, to put a smile on somebody's face, a change on somebody's life, and, and, and you know, stretch your hand to somebody and give a smile to someone who don't have a bad, you know, don't have a good day. So we are always on the call. When you know your call, you can do God's will. To do that, you have to be disciplined, know exactly what you want, set up a goal, and then and start working on those goals to achieve it. Especially work very hard. Don't put the time of limit. And then also have a family who can support you to succeed, who achieve those goals you set up for yourself. Those advice I'm giving to the young generations coming. So don't think so everything in this life gonna be easy for you. Especially for our- yeah. Try, try, try three times before you can think about different way to do it. 
especially for our uh, youth in Africa, in yeah. many of the countries that uh, they might not have the opportunities. So your advice would be the same for those two who are in the continent and uh, are struggling through life, especially now we talk about COVID-19 and uh, has this uh, epidemic uh, in any way or fashion, I mean, what can you say about it as we conclude our thoughts? What's your uh, take on whether there's been challenges? What do you think need to happen? Uh, has the continent done the right thing, Togo? Obviously, other African countries in terms of the pandemic, uh, or what, what? What are you in your mind uh, as we conclude this uh, show? Uh, uh, conclude the uh, interview. Taking, and given from uh, the COVID nineteen, uh, like, you know, who came in and, and you know and and and, and shaking the whole world. Uh, my advice to people today who are going to be listening to, or to watching us to not play with the COVID nineteen. I'm, you know, urging people to not play with this disease. It's a real, and it is killing people. It's taking people's life, especially for those who are living in African land today to continue put everything they had to put in the front, washing hands, continue putting the mask, social distancing. The vaccine is around. I would like people to start advise, uh, ad, you know, advising uh, a big, you know, gathering uh, to not go towards a lot of people. Wear a mask, wash your hand, have a hand sanitizer on your hand, and if we can respect those, uh, you know, uh, challenge those uh, uh, rules, we can save our continent. We can save our people. We can save our family. But for here, we are on the advanced, con you know, in a country. And today the vaccine is out. People are taking the vaccine. Uh, we trust the government. We trust the world. The vaccine can do, can protect people or can protect you. So uh, if you live in this country, only go and take your vaccine and make sure you protect yourself and protect your lovely one who people are around you. But since last June, uh, we'll be able to, to turn into trust. We come out, uh, start do uh, training with the social distance, 10 kids per coach with with, with a new uh, a new installation a new a way to teach a soccer, but we thank God uh, we didn't have any contamination we didn't have any problem until we finished last November, and then we're going to phase two we had to shut down again and then we translate everything to online where we had to do some uh, online classes uh, soccer online and some other education pieces uh, and then now right now. Uh, we get back to the field since last week, 16. So ACIDA is open for registration right now. And then we open Tuesday and Thursday for the recreation program. And Saturday, the kids having fun, come and play a game. And then we also have a travel team. And then you are very competitive. You're going to be competing. Join us. We don't reject anybody. We have a way to accommodate you. You are welcome to join our soccer academy. I believe you is the best soccer organization you can join in because we're going to be there for you. We're going to be supporting you. We'll give you everything we have. Make sure you feel like a home and you succeed on your life. And to finish, discipline is also our moral key. You want to succeed in life, you have to learn how to be disciplined. So if you, you all have to have all those key life key skills, join us and then we can work together and grow for the future. So uh, we we in the community and we are waiting for everybody. So we open now to summer and the summer is coming. We're gonna do some free summer camp to accommodate the community and make sure we continue working day by day and make sure Esida is the right place for family and the community to join so the kid can play soccer and also have education we are providing. Thank you so much. Uh, where would people go to find you? And then we will uh, conclude. Okay, so if you want to find out, so you can go to uh, www.esyda.org, esyda.org. You can also find on the Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we also on the YouTube channel, Esida Soccer. Uh, we also have uh, our uh, broadcast, Esida Broadcast, who we, 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 we broadcast in every other week. So uh, go to Google and then put ACIDA. You can find us, you can find what, we, what we'll be doing from the past to the present. 
I believe you and uh, I advise you, Esida is this good soccer academy number one in the Montgomery County here in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a East County Silver Spring. Your son, your family can join to have a phone to make it to create a new family and then do you know the diversity, the key word, the, the diversity. You're gonna be inclusive. You're gonna be part of a, something who grow, who give it a bright future. John and Sida, you're not gonna be disappointed. I guarantee you that. Well, thank you so much, uh, Coach Fofo. And uh, I'm very, very honored to have sat down with you to have this uh, lively discussion. And uh, thank you so much for your leadership and for all that you do for the African uh, community here in the Washington DC area, but also for the African uh, uh, in Togo and uh, beyond. So thank you so much. Uh, and I'm very honored to have uh, talked to you about this. And we'd like to also thank our uh, listeners for tuning in, for uh, listening to uh, Coach Fofo. And uh, we hope to see you in the future. Thank you so, much. so much. Thank you. Just thank you so much for giving me Avenue to come and express myself. And now we will have a lot to, to work on any time I'm available for you. And then to let our view to know my book is coming soon. And I want everybody one day to support me to put my biography, Coach Fofo Life Story to out. So we are working in soon, gonna be out. Come and support me, come and support Isida. Isida is looking for sponsor. Isida is looking for uh, corporation sponsor. Isida is looking for donation. With your donation, we can do more. We can support so many kids. We can support so many family. So we are not profit. Whatever you give us can help also your company, your organization to grow up. So we are looking for people so we can work together. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for your company, for your, you know, Bocas company too, by what you'll be doing. So our voice can be here by, you know, the, you know, the other people in the community. Thank you. Anytime. I'm honored to have Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Happy Sunday.